given to Joe Jackson. Obviously, they've been good college players. How much do you push each to be elite, and what specific area has been, you know, point for them to work on? Just the consistency. I think when when um, when you watched them on film a year ago, uh, uh, you could see what they did well. They, they could prove on, you know, and sort of sometimes there's like meat left on the bone per se, you know. And uh, with Joe, I thought, you know, uh, just his get off. Using more of a speed, he, you know, he, he had developed some, uh, you know, some really good power rush. He's a strong guy. He's gotten stronger since last year, but being more explosive on his get off and putting tackles in, in a tougher position. Um, and then for a guy like Garvin, again, just going into year two, it, it's just that idea of down after down consistency, you know, and because obviously he made some big time flash plays a year ago. So um, his skill set, his balance, and things like that is kind of elite. You know, so now I just understanding how to complement that with, with different moves. Not to short sell Gregory or Patchen, but how difficult is it a call to pick two starting ends among the two guys we're talking about and D-Jax among those three? Are they all similar in terms of what they bring you? It's so weird to say, but like a lot of times we don't even know. I mean, you don't even really notice who's in because, you know, when, it's a luxury we have and we've had it you know, in the past. Some of the guys we lost, you know, they just we just have starter quality guys. And, uh, and who runs out to the first play doesn't necessarily matter. And we don't think, oh, gosh, this guy's in. It's, there's a drop-off. You know? and that's, and that's, you know, that's what we'd love to have happen at the University of Miami where you can come in with, with, with ways of, of, of too deep, if not even more. And, and, uh, and, and the level of play doesn't define. And not many. Big, big picture. Can you know, add some maybe more exotic looks for the defense just with a more of an understanding? You know, you guys have been here a while. It's more of a veteran group now compared to maybe what we saw in the last year. Uh, I think, you know, there's still an idea of just getting better at what you do. You know, I mean, there's always a chance of, of, of trying to be creative, but being creative for creative sake doesn't, you know, it, it has to have a purpose. So I think as you do it, always, I think you you're, you look back at what you did well and not so well a year ago schematically and, and where you can improve and, and, and then the players you have and how you can plug those guys in to, to play different roles. So, uh, you know, that from that point on, you kind of craft what it takes to, to beat the teams you have to beat. Many you and it came in the spring. You've had ten days of it now with the striker out there. Just have you seen what you've wanted to from that position and from those guys that that are taking that challenge on? We have. I mean, it, it again. It, it's about using our personnel. Okay, so you, with with big athletes like Derek Smith and Romeo Finley. Okay, how can we get those guys on the field when when you're already blessed with two safeties like uh, uh, Red Wine and Johnson with with backup field like like Carter and Paul that really come along, Robert Knowles. So we, you just you got a lot of talent at one position. So how, how do we get all those guys on the field? So um, bringing those guys closer to the box, um, you know, the, their ability to, to play man, be physical and to play the run, you know, and, and, you know, come off the edge, do a lot of different things is really what it's about. It's not necessarily in any type of innovative schematic invention. We were playing nickel forever. It's just, it's just, hey, look, here's a deck of cards we have. How do we best deal these guys out? Are you all calling McLeod a striker, and is he pushing to try to be on the field on second and third down, you know, in competition with Romeo uh, and Derek? Uh, of course. It, it's, in essence, they're all playing the same position. The difference is, is the call sheet based off of what guy's in the game. Right. And then and then how versatile a guy is might expand what we can run when that guy's in the game. And, and a lot of that's going to come down to once we get into game plan, you know, you know as I said a year ago, you know, we, we played uh, in back-to-back -back weeks, Virginia Tech and Notre Dame, very differently because of the different skill sets of those two offenses. And so, you know, you're always going to have the ability to, to match up in the best way possible you think it, to defeat the offense you're facing that week. Is that part of just the evolution of the sport, that strike position? It seems more popular, you know, across football with the size and speed that guys on offense have now. Well, again, at its core, it's a nickel, right? And people have been playing nickel for a million years. So that, that's not new. I think what is new is that having that guy, his job is probably more advanced in terms of being able to play man, run through and play run in the box, you know, play matchup zone, just do all the different things that we do. I think I think having that guy be an every down guy that has the ability to cover like a DB and hit like a linebacker is probably um, because of what the offense is doing in terms of run pass conflict stuff, I think that's probably what you're seeing more of now. So guys come to the top of the field, guys are could be that's correct. Could be big safeties, guys that were big safeties in, in high school. Maybe smaller linebackers. You know, just guys, certain guys that have a knack. You know, obviously we got a great strength program for these guys that they don't look like they change into, as human beings after they've been here for for six months. So you know, we love we get them in, we develop them, and find out the best way to deploy them on the field. Manny, how's Tito done through ten practices with you guys? He, he's been outstanding. 
Uh, we, we, we thought he would contribute, you know, we liked what we saw on film from a year ago. Uh, he is, you know, so we, we had a good feeling about him. He has really exceeded our expectations. Uh, he's just tough. He just goes about his business. He, 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 he can move. He can make plays in the backfield. He chases the ball. Um, it has been, you know, again, we, we feel like we've kind of lucked out on the, the grad transfer thing the last few years, and we feel like we've got another great one in Tito. He's, he's really fit in really well with our guys as well. How's Steve Jack doing? Like, we just noticed he hasn't been out in the beginning of practice. Um, is he fine physically? Yeah. He's missed a couple of days. Yeah, no, he's fine. He's fine. You know, just being an older guy, you know, so giving some younger guys some reps, you know. But, yeah, I mean, we, we, we know what to expect with him. You know, high motor guy, toughness, uh, leadership, all the things that d Jack brings, you know. So, you know, his status is on the team is, is pretty cemented. A couple more questions. Where is the long among freshmen? I know you expect most or all of them to help you at some point this year. Is it Rousseau because he's been here and did good things in the spring? Is it someone else who comes to mind? Yeah, it's almost – you almost can't call them freshmen. They get their mid-year guys. You know, it's, they're almost in a different class. And certainly Rousseau, you know, would jump out of those mid-year guys of, of the ones that just showed up. Um, it's hard, you know, because they, they, they flash on different days at times. Um, I, I would say Al Blades um, from a consistent, consistency level. Um, he shows up. He knows in front. We've been very impressed with the things we've seen from Nigel Bethel. Um, Pat Joyner, same. So, but I, but I'd say Al of the ones that just kind of got dropped off to school. I'd say Al has probably been uh, the, the a nose ahead of the other ones. All right, all right. thank you all very much. Have a good one.